Hello out there, Ron Callis with another episode, episode number 36 of Automation Unplugged. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, sorry we're getting started just a couple of minutes late. It is Wednesday, February 28th, and uh, today's a very important day. Today's my wife's birthday, and... Uh, I'm taking her out to dinner with my son tonight to a very nice restaurant down in Miami, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, she's informed me to announce that she is 21 years old and holding. So uh, good for her. She's figured out that secret. All right, let me bring to you our guest. Uh, I've got a, a fun individual. Uh, let me bring him on camera. Let's see what we got here. JB, how's it going, sir? Good, Ron. How are you doing today? I am good. If I were any better, I'd be two people. <laughs> Very nice. I got to I got to tell you, I'm actually excited to hear that it's your wife's birthday, and I hope that everybody listening shows up to that restaurant in Miami and and gives her a good happy birthday. You know, that nothing would get me in more trouble than if that actually happened. So, uh, <laughs> let's let's not do that. But uh, you actually met my wife, JB, didn't you, Daniele? You met her a, a few months ago. I did. I did. Wonderful woman. She obviously keeps you in line, which I can fully appreciate. I, amen, as does yours. <laughs> 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 All right. So, JB, you are with Domotes, uh, not to be confused with Domots, as yes. in Mott's applesauce, but Domotes. And uh, if you could fill our audience in on uh, uh, what Domotes is, and then I want to uh, do a little bit of a, a deep dive into your background. Yeah, absolutely. So Domotes is a remote monitoring and management company. We uh, monitor networks or we help integrators monitor the networks that they're installing for their clients or their customers. Um, our primary goal at Domotes is to ensure that the integrator runs a very successful business and that they really provide the best possible customer service for their customers, right? Our goal is to be a tool for the integrators to run their business more efficiently, period. Okay, very cool. By the way, I just uh, verified, JB, that our, our Facebook stream is live. We, we've got a, f a few <laughs> folks hanging out watching us. Wynn Walker just said hello. Oh, excellent. Got to love Wynn. <laughs> Gotta love when when thanks for uh for hanging out and uh commenting. If you're out there, please like, share, comment. Uh that helps us get this content out to a wider audience to all your friends and industry peers. So uh please please do that. I appreciate that. And if you have any questions as we go for JB, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, to read those off and uh, and give those to him live here, so we can field any questions. Um, so JB, uh, you've you've you're with Domotes. You are chief product officer. I want to get into what does that mean? How are you helping your customers? How are you helping your company? Um, yeah. But what's what's a little bit about you you your background? Where where do you come from? How did you land in this industry? Um, how did you end up staying in this industry? Uh -huh. And uh, can you fill fill the audience in on a little bit of uh, about you? Who JB is? I, I think I can do that a little bit here. Awesome. Um, first off, I'll say that I knew from probably age 10 that I wanted to be an electrical engineer. Uh, it started, it started, I'm sure you'll remember these, Ron, but you remember the guy, Mr. Wizard? Oh, I loved Mr. I grew up watching Mr. him on Nickelodeon. Yeah, the guy was great, right? So the thing that fascinated me about Mr. Wizard was an episode where he took a hot dog and two forks and he plugged those forks into each end of the hot dog. And then he plugged one end of a cord to one fork and another end uh, or the other wire to the other fork. And then he plugged it into the outlet and cooked the hot dog. I was completely fascinated with that. And from that point on, I was amazed with, you know, those plugs that were in the wall or the outlets that were in the wall and what I could do with those things. So I knew I wanted to do something electrical. Engineering seemed to have more money associated with it. So I kind of went down that path, um, went to the Colorado School of Mines, got an electrical engineering degree there. 
followed by a systems, a master's in systems engineering, and then went off to work for Texas Instruments, a small little company, you know, based out of Texas. Yeah, I've heard of them, and, yeah. Have you? You've been there? Actually, Wynn, who's listening, I appreciate him because I, I lived in Houston for about 11 years while I was working for TI. Um, when I was there, I started working in the digital signal processing division. I worked on a couple of their digital signal processors that were more focused on media and did a lot of hardware applications engineering and a lot of software development for these media chips that went into various things like uh, video communication systems. In fact, we're, we're talking on Skype right now. Um, I was working on some of the original algorithms that went into video conferencing systems, whether it's for systems like uh, Polycom or Canberg or Cisco. All of these things had to do with networking and video compression. And I was fascinated with that. Ended up spending 11 years of my career with Texas Instruments and kind of growing a really large business uh, for very large clients of ours. At the time, it was probably 2011, I decided that I wanted to spend a little bit more time with my family, spend some time in the mountains. I also wanted to um, you know, do a change in career, which a lot of people want to do after 10 or so years. I decided to look at uh, the Salt Lake City area and I found you know, this small company called Control4 that was doing some pretty cool things, I thought. In fact, they were a customer of ours while I was at TI and decided to take up a role in product management uh, with, with, control, or, yeah, with Control4. That led into you know, four years of development and being in this industry, really trying to adapt the new controllers to do some of the things that a lot of um, you know, the automation world wanted. Did that for quite a bit of time. I found myself partnering or needing to partner with different companies. Uh, Luxel was one of the networking companies that uh, Control4 at the time was a good partner with. And that rolled into a business development role that I had within Luxel. Primary goal there was to make sure that the products that Luxel was doing and the business opportunities that Luxel was finding were going to be successful. And I think that worked well. One of the things that Luxel needed was a remote monitoring and management solution. And they needed a strong partner with that. And at the time, we were working with companies like Ihiji. We were looking at what Oversee was doing. We were looking at what Ubiquity was doing out in the real world. Quite frankly, it came down to the fact that Domotes, a new and up and coming uh, RMR solution, or re re excuse me, RMM, I should say, remote monitoring and management solution was there. We looked heavily at them and we decided, you know what, this is the partner that we wanted to have. That in turn worked itself into a role as a product officer with Domo. So that's how I find myself in this career and in this path. I've essentially been working with custom integrators for the last 15 or so years. And it's been a great, it's been a great ride so far and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. <clears throat> So when you were at Control Four, were you there when they went public? Were you? There? I was. I was. I mean, what was that like? What was the you know when you were inside the company? What was kind of the the energy like? It was uh, it was a lot of fun. In fact, I, it was it. This is my own little personal humorous story, and and maybe Martin playing at Control Four doesn't find it as funny. But the day that I hired on to Control Four was the same day that Martin was announced as the new CEO, <clears throat> and. I called my new potential boss there and I said, hey, what's going on here? What's this mean? And uh, at the time, you know, my boss had said, well, we're, you know, we're redirecting how we're looking at the company and we really want to take it public. And, you know, this could actually prove to be a good opportunity for you. I'm like, OK, let's make it happen. And so uh, going there, we started I started out working with you know, the management teams, figuring out how can we build a product that's going to make control for more and more successful not only for the integrators that are out there and what they're doing, but also for the shareholders, right? And the potential shareholders. Um, it's quite a ride to go from being a startup company that was growing quite well to trying to transition it to be a public company. And that was an experience that I personally enjoyed greatly. 
Um, I didn't mention it, but while I was at TI, I ended up getting a, a, an MBA. And so a lot of the things that I was learning through that two-year program at, at Rice University was very educational when it came to what was happening within Control 4 as we went from that private to public company. So to have learned it in school or read case studies and, and whatnot about it in business school and then to go see it firsthand up front, that had to be pretty fun. It was fun. It was definitely a good time. And it was one of those things where it's like, okay, that investment in that MBA just paid off, right? To, to watch this and be able to help with it. And quite frankly, being able to ask the right questions sure. about, are we focused in the right way? Are we doing the right things we need to do as a company to make this profitable? It was, it was really exciting. So Domotes, is, uh, that's, I'm going to show my ignorance here. That's a, a European company, correct? Domotes was started out of the UK. Um, it was uh, essentially birthed by a gentleman by the name of Domenico. Domenico had uh, worked with Control 4 and some other um, automation solutions out there. And what had happened was, and, and you hear about this, and I'm sure a lot of integrators will empathize with this. What he found is that his wife, who was dealing with the system, more than he was, was always calling and complaining about something, right? Either something didn't work the way it should or something fell offline and so things broke. So Domenico started researching with um, a gentleman by the name of Silvio. Silvio was, uh, ended up being our CTO, our chief technical officer for Domotes. Both of them started looking at, there's got to be a better way to manage this. They started looking at remote monitoring and solution, uh, remote monitoring solutions that were out there. And they were either too high priced or they weren't positioned appropriately for the home automation market, or they didn't really have some of the features that um, Domenico and Silvio were really looking for. They wanted something that was easy to use that either the integrator could very simply use or that the homeowner could use themselves. Because they weren't finding anything, they decided to go build it. And that's really what gets us to Domotes today and where we are today. I'm assuming he had some background in building software um, or, or running a company or, or something like that in terms of finding, so, you know, many of us find pain in our lives every day and we don't decide, oh, I'm going to go solve that for the world. <laughs> I mean, that's so a pretty big step. Yeah, uh, absolutely. 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 Silvio, Silvio certainly had the software background. Uh, Domenico comes from, from more of a business and financial background. Okay. And Silvio, who understands software development, understands process like agile development, and can build a, a solid software team, did just that. It took um, six months and a lot of hiring of people that they know, hiring new software developers. But they essentially went from ground up taking some open source tools that were out there and really built a company based around user stories that they felt were important to the integration channel. Of course, they went out and asked a lot of questions. They went out and looked at competitive solutions that were out there, but it all started from a need, a perceived need, and then asking um, integrators that are in this space, both for automation, home automation space, as well as professional AV, going in and out and asking security integrators what their needs were and how they could solve the problem better. And even IT departments, right? Guys who are running large corporate networks and trying to figure out, hey, what would make this world easier for you? What, what are some of the, well, let, let me back up before I go there. So is, is Domotes a hardware company or a software company or both? When I'm going to say, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And a lot of people get confused by that. I'm going to tell you that my primary focus with Domotes is making us a software as a service company. Okay. Uh, so we, I'm going to say 95% of our business should be software. Now, that being said, those that know us know that we have a little black box that you can put, in fact, most integrators who today are our customers have that black box sitting in their network. The reason that we have that black box is because not all hardware manufacturers are able to adopt our software with the way it's written today. 
We have developed solutions, uh, software solutions that can be put onto embedded platforms, whether those are routers, like is the case with Luxel today, where the Domo software is sitting as an agent on top of the Epic 3 and Epic 4, and soon to be Epic 5 routers. We have our software also embedded on solutions from companies like FireFX, where they were able to take our packages and put them in a virtual machine or a Linux container running on their hardware, and it works great. I will tell you that we are working with other manufacturers that I unfortunately don't want to give names out to right now, but that we're, we're getting our software to run on their hardware as well. So I'm pretty excited about what that means for our future, and it's going the exact direction that we want to take it, which is making a small embedded agent that can sit on top of other manufacturers' hardware and make it function efficiently for the integration channel that's out there. One thing I should note as well, Ron, just I'm not sure whether you're aware of this or not, but we have solutions today that are available on Raspberry Pis. So for people that want to tinker around and, and play with the Domo software on Raspberry Pi installations, you can actually take our software and put it directly on there. What would be an application? What, what, how would that work and why would they do that? I just don't technically understand what that – I know Raspberry Pi is a little – $30 computer processor, but I don't know much beyond that. So Raspberry Pis are, in general, when I use the term Raspberry Pi or Orange Pi or any other type of Pi, uh, Texas Instruments, actually, while I was working for them, created a solution called a Beagle Bone. Um, it was a way in which the semiconductor manufacturers can get companies to go develop software on their platforms. I really look at it as more of a hobbyist tool, but that being said, it is important to note that there are some integrators, there are some people in the managed service provider or even IT spaces that will take this little tiny, think of it as a mini computer, and they will install software that they care about onto these little tiny boxes and enable them to do things like monitor the network through Domo software. They may use it for doing a virtual machining into or VNC, right, getting some sort of visibility onto the network with their own little PC. You can use it for things like that. It's just much more of an embedded solution. And at a price point of, you know, let's say $30 on average, it's a very low cost solution to be able to do something small. Sure. My con uh, let me tell you, my concern with Raspberry Pis, and this is a comment that I, I'm on the phone with, with integrators all the time on, keep in mind that Raspberry Pis are a hobbyist solution. I'm not sure that they're the most effective things when it comes to professional installations or things you need to 100% rely on. Right. But they're there. Got it. Understood. So Wynn Walker just posted a very serious question, JB. Okay. He says, uh, when will Amazon buy do Domotes? <laughs> yeah, that is a very good question. And, and you know, for $1 billion, I'd be happy to answer that. You know? There you so. go. $1 billion. <laughs> do you put your finger? $1 billion. I do find I do find in, in the the discussion I think around I think it was just announced yesterday around Amazon purchasing Ring. I think it's very telling and a very interesting position that Amazon's taking. Obviously, they've made announcements with Lenar and what they're doing from a builder perspective. Um, when I think of one of the entry points that Amazon has with respect to homeowners today. There's two things I think of. Of course, the adoption of Alexa and the smart home and what that means for voice controlled services, et cetera. But the second entry that they have is actually the doorstep. And they know, I'm sure that they have tons of money that gets lost because people are stealing Amazon boxes off the of doorsteps. I think the acquisition of Ring and taking control of a camera that's in, at that doorstep is an amazing one. So I think it's it was a... Fascinating play, isn't it? And to, it is. You and I were at an event a few months ago, and and we were um, with the fellow that that's running Amazon Alexa, mm -hmm. and uh, to think that he was probably noodling and cooking this up, and only to eminently announce that that's that's pretty fascinating. Yeah, it is. It, it's a smart move on their part, at least in my opinion. I'm sure there are plenty of opinions out there of, of both directions, but I think it's a wise move. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. 
Now, um, in terms of the the software slash hardware solution, I, I want to dive into maybe what to me seems like the obvious kind of elephant in the room, and that is, you know, uh, Control Four just acquired Ihiji, and yes. they went from a, a paid solution, an integrator would pay something. I, I frankly don't know the latest Ihiji business model or what it was, but I know now. There's some cost structure. I think there is no official cost per month for an integrator. And mm-hmm. then there's um, Snap's oversee solution, and, and they provide some network visibility. Uh, and and I, I don't believe there's a cost if you're an oversee or a Snap AV integrator. And with Domotes, there there is a cost. Yeah. And so I'm going to assume that there's some capability that Domotes is providing um, or value add that Domotes is providing yep. to the integrator. Can you, uh, I'm sure some of our listening audience are are looking at all of this RMR talk and service and maintenance discussions that are happening yep. throughout the industry and they're seeing Domotes as a very viable contender for their business. Can you help me and my audience understand that landscape? No, I think it's a it's a very good question. It's one that is uh, posed to me all the time when I'm, you know, whether I'm face to face with an integrator or even over the phone having conversations about how does Domotes differentiate themselves from others in the market. Um, there's a couple things that I, I should touch on here. Uh, first of all, you know, Oversee as well as ITG have made very large names for themselves, especially in the Cedia channel. When I think of Cedia, I certainly think the primary focus is being residential installations or residential integration channels. Uh, That being said, there's a larger market out there when it comes to professional AV or kind of what I would classify as the Infocom-like market. Uh, The security channel is a big one as well. So there's all these channels that uh, people are going for and buying for. Because of the fact that there are so many channels, and I think it's important to recognize that integrators today don't just play with one service. They don't do just one thing only. Some of them do, right? Some of the smaller integrators are out there. Maybe they're only installing Sony TVs, right? And they're putting up the racks and that's all they do. And they provide a remote control with it. But what I see from integrators is that they don't just work with Control 4. They don't just work with Savant. They don't just work with, you know, hike vision cameras or whatever it may be out there. They cross multiple areas and they have to do that from an integration perspective uh, to survive, right? Because one company can't solve all their problems. I mentioned at the very beginning that Domotes is a tool for the integrator to run their business more efficiently and really optimize themselves as integrators. What we try to do, and this has been one of our key value propositions, is that we work with multiple manufacturers or vendors in the integration channels, not only in the home automation space, but in professional audio and in security, as well as just managed service provider networks in general. And it makes us, it it provides us with a, a broader value proposition to any one particular integrator. The key thing that we have talked about is if you are going to live inside the Snap AV ecosystem or you're going to live inside the Control 4 ecosystem, I think the solutions that have been provided there are very good and they work really well. But it's important to note that Domotes works equally well in the Snap AV ecosystem and Domotes works equally well in the Control 4 ecosystem. And as we work with other companies like Crestron or Savant or um, you know Panamax and the core brand solutions for PDUs or the Legrand solutions for all of the things that they do, both Vantage Lighting as well as Middle Atlantic and their PDUs, all the way up to PDUs like Raritan that are catered more towards the server space and server industry. Um, we have a big advantage there when it comes to helping the integrator go with one tool that cuts across multiple systems. Okay. No, I, that, that actually is uh, – I did not realize that or think about it that way, um, and I, I'm excited I saved that question for this live broadcast because mm-hmm. that, that, that was pretty informative. Now, to, to go, I don't know, maybe more uh, – I want to say high-level – 
Mm -hmm. What are the benefits or operational efficiencies that an integrator gains okay. when they are monitoring their customers' networks? Just, uh, you know, s straightforward. Why should they do it? Yeah, let, and then I, I mean, I'm going to peel the layers back and go a little deeper. But, yeah, you know, I mean, let, let's just talk about that in general, regardless of what solution you're using. I, I, I feel right. your question is more around why should an integrator be thinking about remote monitoring and management, period? I would challenge many of them today are not. So assuming <laughs> they should, the future would then be very bright for Domotes and the other vendors trying to cater to that, that space. Yeah, so absolutely. In why fact, should if they do it? If you look at the, I'm going to back you up on what you're stating there, because if you look at some of the latest CE Pro information that has come out um, over the last several months, what you find is that only, I mean, it's a ridiculously small number, like something like 10% of the systems that are out there that have been deployed by custom integrators have, are not being, or, or excuse me, 10% are being monitored, which means that 90% of those jobs are not being monitored. Right. My, the biggest optimization point that I can say for why you should be remotely monitoring these networks is so that you can eliminate a truck roll. That is, that is thing number one. I mean, truck rolls, of course, it depends on where you are in the market. I mean, if the system you installed is right next door, it costs less. Then if the system is in the middle of Montana and you're in Bozeman and you need to drive four hours to get to that network, the last thing you want to do is drive four hours just to find out that all you had to do was pull the plug on the set-top box and plug it back in for the integrator, or excuse me, for the customer. That, that is a horribly expensive truck roll. Same if you live in the middle of New York or Manhattan, right? That's gonna be very expensive. So if you can pay for a service that allows you to remotely manage those types of situations, you are so far ahead when it comes to the profitability of your company and how you operate efficiently. Furthermore, what I would say is even in more complex situations where it's not just a, uh, you know, you had to power cycle a device, but if that RMM system, the remote monitoring and management system can provide you with visibility into what may be wrong with that network or that system, you may still have to do a truck roll. But if you could within, let's say 90% certainty say, oh, before I do this four hour truck drive, I better make sure that I have this particular network switch and a second Apple TV on the network just to make sure that I solve that problem. It will help you eliminate a potential second truck roll, which I, I have no doubt in my mind there are several integrators that are listening on, the, on this call right now that have said, I have gone out to a site, figured out what the problem was, I had to drive back to go get the hardware and go back the next day, right, to solve it. If I can help eliminate two truck rolls, great. If I can eliminate at least one, it is starting to pay for itself. What in the applications where integrators are monitoring, what <clears throat> is your recommendation uh, and what do you see happening today in terms of them also correlating a, I don't know what you, I'm not gonna use the right words here, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the mm -hmm. actionable side of that, meaning if you find that something needs to be power cycled, you would need a smart UPS that you could then perhaps power cycle remotely, right? So how, yeah. how often are you able to not only see the issue, your dealer see the issue, but then have the necessary hardware in place yeah. to then do something about it? That, that's a very good question there. And um, I, I will say, I will say that there is no, you can't take the K out of custom, right? That's the, kind of the term we, we always use. Each system that an integrator puts in is very customized. I will say that it's only through le learning, maybe reading white papers, experience is probably the biggest way in which an integrator starts to understand how they should set systems up to effectively solve problems remotely. That, that's something that I do want to say there, and I think it's an important aspect. The, the term that you used about smart UPS, um, we use, so a UPS is an uninterruptible power supply. That's something that will keep the network up or keep the system up while power may be out at the house. That's an important part of um, an installation that integrators should consider. 
the term that we use for being able to power cycle devices is typically PDU or a power distribution unit. And I usually like to put the word I or intelligent or smart PDU in front of that because you don't want to have a power system that you turn off all the plugs at one time and it's just done, which often a UPS will do if you can control that. But an intelligent PDU will allow you to have you know, anywhere between, well, it could be as small as one with products like Wemo, which are low cost Wi-Fi enabled uh, PDUs, but it has one outlet you control all the way up to large 16 outlet devices that you can control each uh, individual outlet um, independently. What we do is, and what we try to help integrators with is understand how to best use those intelligent PDUs and set them up on the right types of devices so that they can remotely power cycle those, those systems. For instance, smaller systems, whether it's a, a one outlet like Wemo, like we talked about, or you can use Middle Atlantic's two outlet uh, PDUs or Luxel's two outlet PDUs, you can put those behind a TV and be able to power cycle an Apple TV or be able to power cycle a smart TV remotely to get control back to those systems. Those are things that, depending on the area that you live in, depending on the devices that you're installing, the integrator is going to start to learn which devices they need to put PDUs on and which ones they don't. And we encourage that level of thinking and type of thinking uh, to be able to more effectively build a system that can be remotely monitored and managed like that. JB, what's your observation on why more of our industry does not do remote monitoring? <laughs> and and why does the majority of our industry today in 2018 not not only yeah. not monitor but not have service or maintenance contracts or, or any sort of post installation uh, contractual binding relationship with their customers? What I'm sure you are opinionated on that. What what are your <laughs> thoughts? I'm certainly opinionated opinionated on that, Ron. Um, the the one thing that I at least for the first part of your question and why hasn't this industry adopted it as fast as they have. And my response to that is that, and I think that the statement that you're, you're saying there, the question you're asking is primarily posed around the Cedia channel and what it means for that's accurate. say that again. That's accurate. Yeah. The residential AV guys. And I think the reality is, is that, and it's important to, to go back on the word that I said, which is, Domotes is a tool, right? Ihiji is a tool. Um, Oversee is a tool for the integrators. And what that means is it's a tool really for their business. And if they're not ready to adopt a new tool and change how they do business, it becomes, in some sense, detrimental for them to make that change. It usually has to be a forcing function to the owner or a forcing function to that general manager of that integration company to make that change. The guys that have adopted um, these remote monitoring management tools are the ones that are much more progressive in their thinking. They're looking at how they can drive efficiencies within their organization. They're looking at, and another thing, especially for smaller companies, let's say guys that have less than five or somewhere like eight to five employees, what they're looking for is how can I spend less time on the phone, less time in my truck, and spend more time doing the things that I want to do as an integrator. Most of the guys in the residential AV space, whether they came from car audio or whether they came from stereo business or whatever it may be, they're in it for the love of the audio. They're in it for the love of the video. Um, I doubt too many of them are in it for the love of supporting that customer. Right. It's a necessary evil that has come about. In Sadly, I agree with you. Yeah. And I think what I'm trying to do for them is say, hey, we're trying to make it simple. And this is this is very much a domo statement here. We're trying to make it simple for them to adopt. We don't want them spending tons of time doing the installation. Right. We want them to be able to use an app on their phone to I, I, I use the terms I, I've quoted this for the last five or six years, but get in, get out, get paid. Right. When it comes to a problem, when they get a call from their customer that says, hey, something's broken. Same mantra. Right. Except I don't want them to get into the house or to the system. I want them to get onto their app, fix the problem and then get out of there. 
Whether they choose to get paid for that service or not, that's their business. But what I want to make sure that they're doing is spending time doing the things that they love to do and that they want to do. And they're not messing around with, okay, how do I VPN into this system? Shit, do I need to do a truck roll? Am I allowed to say shit, by the way? I didn't mean to on this uh, one. It's okay. I curse on occasion as well. Okay, good. Well, Much more when I'm off camera than I get on, about but you know, it's all good. <laughs> so all anyway, right. that's, that's a, a primary driver here. Uh, Mr. Seth Rubenstein posted a question, and uh, he said, what is the Domot's relationship with Fing? Oh, that's a very good question. I uh, do not I even know what Fing is, so I'm very curious. Seth, thanks for watching, and thanks for posing the question. Yeah, that's, that's a great question there, and I, I can appreciate Seth uh, bringing that up. So Fing is a company. It's actually a product. It was a master's thesis that was started roughly, gosh, it was almost 10 years ago now, by two guys that were in Italy. What they did is they created a network scanning tool for iPhones and Android phones that, and I'm pretty certain that any guy who is a networking guy who knows networking or has set up networks understands what thing is. But it's a tool to be able to scan the network you're on and see which devices are connected to your system. The important aspect of Fing as it relates to Domo's is that Domo's acquired Fing about two years ago. The reason that we acquired it is because we were leveraging the technology that Fing used to discover devices on the network. And we said, uh-oh, I see this back. Are you there? Yeah, JB, we got a little, there you are, you're back. Your interwebs was not cooperating for a few moments. Oh, I can't stand that when that happens. I know, but it looks like we have you back now. Good, good. Well, what I was, what I was mentioning is that Fing and the technology that Fing used is something that we at Domo's adopted. And we adopted it so much that we decided just to acquire the company. So uh, Fing is, a, is a wholly owned by Domo's now. The benefit and what Fing does is when it goes out and scans the network, we, have, we find the MAC address of that device. We then associate that MAC address to the manufacturer of that product. And we take it many steps further through various ways of scanning and through intelligence on, in the cloud to say, that MAC address is not only this manufacturer, but it's also this model number. And we can populate the information inside Domo's to more easily assist the integrator with what the devices are on the network. They do not have to just take you know, the layer two MAC address and start guessing at what it is. What we can do is automatically populate what that device is on the network and say, that, okay, this is a, you know, an Apple TV, by the way, it's model four. All that the integrator has to do is say, this is in the living room on the first floor. And it makes it that easy for them. It goes back to my message before, which is how can we make it easier for the integrator to more quickly set up the system, get in, get out and get paid. Got it. I understand. Well, two, two quick questions. We're at 38 minutes. Uh, I, I historically like to keep these between 30 and 45 minutes, but uh, the conversation is fascinating and you're doing a great job, JB, of explaining things. So uh, I blinked and uh, somehow 40 minutes just passed by. It's pretty amazing. Sometimes I talk too much. So. Uh, yeah, no no worries. Um, uh, geez, what was I going to ask? Uh, so the, the first question is, uh, if a dealer is listening, and they want to learn more about uh, Domo's. Mm -hmm. What do they need to do? What's the best course of action in terms of them learning more about the company, getting, engage, uh, get, getting uh, in touch with you? What do you recommend? So there's a couple ways in, in which we can do that. Uh, first of all, our website is by far the best way to start getting engaged with us. Um, our website is uh, domotes.com, so D-O-M-O-T-Z.com. On that web page, you'll find various ways of communicating not only with us, but also some of our key partners. We make our software available through our, our, um, our partner channels. 
So guys like Luxel, guys like TrendNet, FireFX, these are ways in which you can work with our partners. We work with a couple different managed service providers, which you'll find on our network under the Git Domotes tab. So companies like Krika or Axios, Blackwire Designs is another one, and several others that are regionally based that you can find. So working with some of our partners, checking out our website. One thing that I also want to point out, Ron, and this is important for guys that um, are new to Domotes and what we do, we even make our solution, our software available on NAS drives. So some of the NAS drives, especially the more popular ones like Synology and QNAP, we have agents, what we call agents, our software, available through their app stores. You certainly can enable that on those NAS drives and then try us for a 21-day free trial. So it gives you a real big opportunity or good opportunity to uh, try us out, see what we're about, and see how easy it is for us to set up a system. Awesome. Are you, JB, you or your company going to be out in Nashville next week at the ProSource event? Are you guys a member of ProSource or involved with that group? So I will tell you, Ron, that we're not affiliated directly with any of the different buying groups that may be out there. Okay. But, but I will say that uh, companies um, like Luxel or TrendNet and some of our partners are associated with those groups. And I am more than confident in those companies that they can provide a lot of information about uh, Domotes and who we are. I will say between our sales team and myself, we're trying to get out to more and more events uh, so that we can really show our name and show who we are and, and show what we have available. Oh, Ron, one, one more thing I should point out uh, for integrators that want to try us. They should feel free to download the Domotes app from the App Store, whether that's the Android or iOS App Store. Sure. In that app, there is a demo that you can run directly. Uh, so you can go in and play with different things like um, how, the, how the system looks, how it, how it sets up, and you can see how you can connect to different devices. It's obviously just a, um, an in-app demo, so you're not going to get any true connectivity to the demo system or the, the system that's out there, but it gives you a look and feel about how Domotes works. So you're seeing a simulation of what it would be to have connectivity and be getting real data. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, JB, it has been a pleasure having you on Automation Unplugged. Uh, you've been a great guest. Um, very easy sure. talking to you. And uh, I always appreciate that as the person on the other end where <laughs> my job is to keep the conversation engaged. So uh, thank you for that, taking time that sounds out like of your a busy challenge schedule. For the next time. That, that is a challenge. The gauntlet <laughs> has been laid down. But uh, yeah. no, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you very much, Ron. I do appreciate it. appreciate the opportunity to talking to you and, and to the audience out there. Thank you. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is, uh, this has been another episode, episode 36 of Automation Unplugged. And uh, thanks so much for walking, uh, not walking, for watching and listening. If you're driving, remember, do not watch, just listen. And uh, I know there's a few of you out there that have told me you like to listen between uh, uh, site visits or client meetings. So I appreciate that feedback. And uh, again, if you, there's any particular guest or types of guests that you want to have on the show, just ping me a personal email, ron at onefirefly.com. And uh, I'll make sure to get that to the appropriate people on my team for scheduling purposes. And uh, uh, next week... I'm thinking out loud. No, you know what? I'm pretty busy next week. I'm going out to Nashville for ProSource, and then uh, at the end of the week, I'm going to be up in Orlando for uh, robot uh, competitions with uh, my high school kids that I mentor. But, uh, you know, I actually think I'm going to be doing an episode of Automation Unplugged. I'm going to squeeze that in on Wednesday. So uh, on that note, I'll see you next Wednesday uh, for the next show, show 37. Uh, make it a great day, and uh, I will see you on the flip side. Thank you, everybody. Be well.